So for this, to talk about on Xiaomi, ringing the right chords in users' hearts. We have Mr. Anuj Sharma, CMO of Xiaomi. Please put your hands together for him. He'll be talking about the smartphones and how we can become more smarter than the smartphones, or maybe the smartphones remain smarter than us. Please Hi. welcome, sir. Thank you so much for coming. And the audience is all yours. Please go ahead. Thank you. Can I get the presentation? There you go. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I think I'm going to be between you and lunch. So I'm not going to take as much time as uh, you know, I had originally planned. I'll try and make it really quick. But uh, as you would have guessed, I am from Xiaomi. I'm, I'm wearing it on my t-shirt as well. But uh, let me take this opportunity of you know, introducing the company a little bit, because I think that's fundamental in everything that we do. Uh, so Xiaomi uh, is a little differently pronounced that compared to what we normally hear. Uh, so it, it's coming in from a very interesting place, interesting uh, source. Xiao actually stands for millet. It's the small rice. Uh, and the whole idea of getting that name from there is the fact that it's a basic food for most of Asia. So that's where it came in from. Uh, it's also a very interesting part where it's linked to this uh, old Buddhist saying, which basically says a single grain of rice can be as great as a mountain. What it really means is, you know, the small things that kind of grow up from a very small start, the whole evolution of it has to be super important, like perhaps all good friendships that we want to cultivate with our fans. Now, the, the base of everything that we do in marketing started off with one key vision. So back in 2010, uh, you know, the whole smartphone revolution was just getting started. Internet was not with everyone. Obviously, today, it's, you know, everyone has access to internet. Everyone is interacting, transacting. Some of us are still on our phones. Uh, but in 2010, this was a very, very different uh, era. And at that point, you had the digital haves and digital have-nots, which basically meant that we were on a cusp, a very dangerous cusp, where you could divide the entire community, you could divide the population because of the digital divide that was to come. And at that point, uh, there were seven people, seven friends, actually, who came together and said, we need to change this. So we should not allow that to happen. And this is where, you know, looking at the mobile side of internet was uh, the company born. So Xiaomi as a company is just over 11 years old now. So back in 2010, when this idea came about, that has manifested into what the company is today. And the basic idea was to get innovation for everyone. We believe that everyone in the world should have access to technology because technology is the way that you would progress going forward. Uh, think of it as, you know, the, right now, all the opportunities that we see. Uh, if you're coming out of college and you're looking for a job, it has to be built on technology. Right? No longer are people going around with their CVs and dropping it in offices, right? Or if you're a small vendor and you're looking at payments, digital payments have changed it. Now imagine a world where all of this was not happening. It would have been very, very different. And of course, what we want is to have that innovative technology in the hands of people. And it's not just about smartphones. Of course, right now, we associated this with smartphones, but it's about technology. Whatever technology that comes in, uh, the challenge with our industries are you know, if it's a new tech, if it's something that we've spent a lot of R&D dollars on, we want to keep it for a small group. We obviously want to make the maximum money that we can. Uh, at Xiaomi, we believe that that could actually harm the society. And that's where we want to push that forward and bring that technology as early as possible to as many people as we can across the world. And 
the company basically has these core values, right? We basically never want to cease to explore. So that's, that's what I said. It's not about phones alone. Whatever the next technology is, whatever the needs could be. No empty promises. So we don't want to be just sitting on you know, a higher cloud and talking at 30,000 feet. And of course, the last part is, and this is a little tricky one, especially for a marketeer like me, be friends with our users. For the longest time, we all have been told that your customer is king. We believe that is a wrong thing at Xiaomi. And of course, I mean, some people can continue to have that. Uh, the thinking is, you know, when you have a king or a queen, you will do anything. You will give empty promises to get your way. Right? That's what used to happen. But there's one segment in all our lives where we do not lie. We're not making things up. And those are friends. So we believe in Xiaomi that our customers need to be our friend, and we need to treat them as such. Right? So that's where the entire story starts coming together, where you have to be truthful, you have to be transparent, you have to be upfront with your friends. And this is where a lot of things that you've seen in Xiaomi have happened. With those understandings, we basically started in India just about year, eight years ago. Uh, so we're still kind of very, very young in India. Uh, like the rest of the world. <clears throat> and we started with three key pillars. So we said we will bring in the best products that you can get. And it has to be across price bands. So we can't be limited to, say, only the premium segment, because you will miss out the masses in India. But we also kind of have to get to every nook and corner and every particular demographic of the country. The second one, which is challenging, is when you do this and you spread that wide out, is maintaining your quality. And the third part is, like you would be with all your friends, you have to keep it honest. And pricing is one part of it where we continue to have what we call honest pricing. How have we done so far? Uh, so if I look at quality, and this is a little interesting, we are the number one quality brand in the country. Right? Even with all the challenges, uh, that we have, the way we are shaped in terms of a business, uh, we continue to have the lowest field failure rate across all brands uh, when it comes to phones. Moving to the next part of it, right, bringing in the best possible products. Now, we've had this for multiple generations, but I definitely believe that as we came in, we completely revolutionized how the smartphone industry was. Uh, in fact, uh, there's a quick in chart, and I don't know if you guys at the back can read this, but uh, this is 2014-15. So this is what your 3G penetration was, and that was 4G. And in a year, Xiaomi was able to completely flip that for the entire country. Uh, the reason I brought this chart here today is because we are on a cusp of moving to 5G, and obviously we are very, very excited to do this again. And the third part of it, and this is the toughest, right? Honest pricing. Now, as a business, I think there is no company which says no to profits. Everyone wants to maximize as much money as you can make. We don't, right? So we've actually publicly gone out and stated it multiple times that we at Xiaomi will not make more than 5% of profit ever. It is extremely bold, but why are we saying all of this? One is, again, going back to the part where you are friends with your users. You don't rip your friends off. Of course, you know, this 5%, now the other question is why not 0%? You still need to feed in that R&D so that you can bring in better products for the future. So you can't completely go zero, but you will not go beyond 5%. If we ever make more than 5%, we tend to give it back to our fans uh, in one way or the other. Right? It would be a better product or uh, discounted pricing, but we always flow that extra profit back into our community. Again, that's what friends would do. We believe that's the right thing to do as well. All of this over five years, so this is 2014 till 2019, made us essentially going in from innovation to everyone. Our fans used to call us the Deshka brand. Right? So that journey was phenomenal for five years. Uh, we dependent on two aspects of it. Again, 
our fan. Now, the Xiaomi fan club, uh, incidentally, I spoke about uh, the Xiaomi fan clubs uh, the last time I was at the Pet CMO uh, Summit. Uh, we've got fan clubs in close to about 30 cities. Now, these are not official fan clubs. These are people who believed in the same things that we believe in and decided to form communities around that. Right? They meet up on a monthly basis. They discuss what the next step of the tech should be. Sometimes, if we are lucky enough to be in that city, we are part of those discussions, but they are now becoming a guiding force equal to what our internal teams are. And the second team that is obviously super important is our own people. Employees at the heart of everything. Uh, I'm not too sure uh, how many of you guys know this, but most of our campaigns feature our own internal employees. Right? Because we believe our employees are the brand ambassadors. Right? So instead of, I mean, we have uh, partnered with celebrities, we have partnered with others, but at the core of it, we keep coming back and using our own employees in as many campaigns as we can because we believe that the people who are part of Xiaomi are the biggest believers in our vision. And if you're talking about our products, if you're talking about our journey, that's the best way of doing this. Well, that was still 2019. Uh, and by that time, uh, we were the most loved brand and the most desired brand. And luckily, as a byproduct of it, the number one selling brand in the country when it came to smartphones, uh, smart TVs as well. Uh, incidentally, at this point in 2019, uh, our smart TVs had just done about a year and a half. Uh, at that point, for smart TVs, Xiaomi was selling as many TVs, uh, as many smart TVs as Samsung, LG, and Sony all put together. Right? That much of a revolution. And of course, smaller things as well. So we saw security cameras, we saw power bank as a need in smaller parts of it. So we were the leading brand here. We are the leading brand here, sorry. But then we had the, the entire pandemic. So for the last two years, obviously, we've all collectively uh, faced challenges across the board. Uh, I mean, obviously, this event couldn't have happened in the last two years. But beyond that, consumers fundamentally faced problems that they had never done. Right? So I'm talking about 2020, uh, 2021. And you know, the reason I've just left this uh, slide blank is because those were dark times. I'm sure people in the room here, we've all been privileged enough to have a support system. We've been privileged enough to continue to have a job in most cases and to get that income. But a lot of our countrymen actually faced a lot of problems. Uh, and then at, at Xiaomi, we were thinking about this part uh, right from the beginning. What do you do, right, considering these are your friends? So we, we kind of changed strategy a little bit. The first thing was we, again, believe that technology is connecting people together. Right? Uh, so we looked at our entire uh, universe into two or three different groups. So one aspect was the people who really needed help. And of course, we did a whole bunch of CSR. At that point, we mobilized most of our employees going out and helping with the people who really needed this. The second thing is we changed our product strategy. And the third one is we also realized that there were people in the middle, right, between our consumers and between us who needed that help too. So we did two interesting things here. So one is, like I said, we changed our entire product strategy. And if I can get that on. Yeah, OK. Now it's too much, yeah. So we, because people were kind of uh, working from home or learning from home, we launched laptops, we launched tablets. Again, they were not part of our uh, portfolio till the lockdown happened, right? So the teams continue to work super hard to try and solve problems that our consumers were having. Uh, one interesting thing, which was, it's probably a, a first world problem, but uh, right? so that was a big question. So we even launched robo vacuum cleaners during the lockdown. So our teams obviously worked really hard to get that in. Uh, incidentally, uh, Xiaomi is the 
the largest seller for robo vacuum cleaners in the country today uh, in just the two years or so. But the other aspect that I was saying, right? Now, a lot of us would also not know this, but Xiaomi has the largest single brand retail network in the country. Right? We have more than 3,000 partners who only sell Xiaomi products and nothing else. And these are across the country. Right? So uh, right from you know, bigger towns to really small places where you know, these guys obviously had that interest. They believed that Xiaomi products can change, for example, their small town's fortunes or their village's fortunes. And for all of these partners, when the lockdown hit, it was almost a doomsday. You had retail, retailers who, obviously because of the lockdown, could not open their shops. Or even once the shops started opening up slowly, people were too scared to step out. I'm sure all of us remember, right? after the first uh, lockdown or during the wave two part of it, uh, we all didn't want to go out and expose ourselves. Uh, at that point, in just about three weeks time, so about 21 to 22 days, our team completely worked on a platform which linked the consumers with every retailer in their locality. So we basically called it you know, me commerce or local commerce, and this was done in just flat 21 days. The idea was, you know, you take care of your own, right? Whether it's consumers, whether it's your fans, or even your retailers, you have to ensure that this, uh, you know, the, the overall business goes on, uh, they get their livelihood, and they stay part of uh, your family. So this was uh, quite interesting. And uh, then towards the end of 2020, uh, I think Diwali, you know, because Diwali is a, a community festival, uh, 2020 was the first time where a lot of people were not able to connect back with their family or friends. So we did this uh, small campaign, I would say, uh, to kind of just put that message across that you know, even if you are not with your parents or you're not with your family, you can still be with them. Uh, thanks to our original vision, which was essentially that technology needs to be for everyone and technology can connect everyone. So we did this little film uh, during the lockdown. Uh, I think we can probably just play this. Hopefully the audio's up. सुबह सुबह मोहल्ले को जगा के रहेंगे माँ के हाथ का लड्डू खा के रहेंगे बड़ों की दुआएं लेके रहेंगे दिन को रंगीन बना के रहेंगे घर को रोशनी से सजा के रहेंगे वालों के घर जाके रहेंगे हर साल की तरह इस बार भी दिवाली तो मना के रहेंगे दिवाली को हैप्पी बना के रहेंगे you know, we continue to take that message forward even in the post-COVID world. Uh, today, obviously, I'm hoping COVID's over, and that's why we are all here. Uh, but uh, a lot of fundamental things have changed, 
and we want to stick with the basic core message that Xiaomi will be a friend of its consumers, Xiaomi will be a friend of its users, and treat them such. Uh, so what we did here was a little interesting. Uh, you know, obviously Diwali season is coming up, and I'm just talking about now, right? Actually, the, the sales started uh, last night. I'm sure all of you guys would know this. And uh, everyone's talking about how big Diwali is gonna be, how uh, awesome it will be, how, you know, what, what's the overall market size, and of course the campaigns that will come with it. Uh, but we were looking at, what, you know, what would friends do? And uh, we, we were thinking of, you know, how do you kind of communicate the right thing that needs to be communicated during Diwali? And uh, it, so I, I'll show you the, the, the Diwali campaign that we finally went ahead with, but uh, how it got started is a very interesting story. So this, this happened uh, around the Independence Day weekend. So Independence Day luckily was on a Monday this time, so which basically meant you had a long weekend. And I have this, uh, uh, my person, a colleague in uh, my team called Sumit. So Sumit heads my product marketing, and uh, Sumit has now got a, a eight-year-old lab, right? So he, he obviously loves that lab. Uh, but he was scared that obviously, you know, he's now getting old and a lab has never seen the ocean. So his, his lab's name is Max. So he said, okay, I'm gonna, on Friday evening, we were sitting, we were having this uh, conversation and he said, I'm gonna take Max to the ocean. Right? That's my weekend plan. So Saturday, Sunday, Monday, one day all the way to Goa, one day in Goa and one day back. And so he decided to do that. On Friday evening on his way back home, he stopped at the nearest petrol pump. And uh, he knows the guy. Uh, I mean, it's close to his house, so he keeps going there often. And uh, the guy asked, saying, sir, long drive. So the Sumit says, yes. He said, uh, sir, kal kab ja rahe ho? As in, what time are you leaving? So Sumit said, early tomorrow morning. The guy is uh, like, sir, we are a 24 hour petrol pump, so you can fill your petrol tomorrow also, if you don't mind, can you come tomorrow instead of right now? So obviously a, a very weird question because you are there for business that time, right? And uh, Sumit asked him, why is he saying this? And the guy turns around and says, sir, 12K baad, which is basically after midnight, the petrol prices will be dropping. Now this was so weird in the place that we are in today that somebody actually told him that if you just wait for a couple of hours, you will actually get your petrol cheaper. And because you're filling in for a long haul or a long drive, you know, you'll be able to save some money. So sure enough, uh, he did that next day morning. He probably saved like a buck or two per liter, so maybe a hundred bucks. But it's that small thing that mattered, right? It was that trust that he had with him. And the guy considered him to be a close enough, I would say like a friend, to tell him or give him that extra tip that don't buy it now, but just come after midnight and then uh, you know, fill up your gas. Uh, things like this happen so rarely in our overall context, in the Indian business context, that Sumit came in on uh, Tuesday morning after the long weekend and told us that this had happened. It's such a small story, but it happens so rarely that he remembered it and he told all of us, and we thought this was brilliant because for a business to do that, uh, it, it, one is rare, and second is, at least from a marketing perspective, it becomes a message of friendship and trust. So, what do friends do before Diwali shopping? And, um, how many of uh, you guys are looking at new electronics this Diwali season? Right. Any hands? Right. How many of you guys are really into tech? So, okay, let me ask a question, right? If a friend asks you that should I buy a phone, probably three or four weeks before the Diwali sales start, you normally tell him that there'll be a better offer coming in, right? As a business, you're not supposed to do that, but as friends, you do, and we did exactly that. So let me just run this campaign, if we can get that video going. Oops. 
दिवाली विद मी के ऑफर्स डिसाइड हो रहे हैं और एक बात तो क्लियर है कोई भी टेक खरीदने से पहले थोड़ी देर रुक जाओ हैश टैग डोन बाय टेक येट वो क्या है ना शुभ मुहूर्त अभी आया नहीं है और अब हमारी नहीं मानोगे तो किसकी मानोगे आने वाला है टेक का शुभ मुहूर्त दिवाली विद मी के साथ सो इवन लाइक टू वीक्स बिफोर द सेल्स वर सपोज टू स्टार्ट वी जस्ट बेसिकली टोल पीपल दैट डोंट यू नो बाय राइट नाउ बिकॉज़ यू विल बी एबल टू सेव मनी इंसिडेंटली आई डोंट नो इफ यू गाइस कॉट दैट बट द पीपल इन द फिल्म आर आई एम्प्लॉइज इन फैक्ट वन ऑफ देम इज सिटिंग देयर सो से हाय टू कस्तूरी कस्तूरी वाज आल्सो इन दैट फिल्म द होल आईडिया इज ऑब्वियसली दे आर आवर ब्रांड एंबेसडर्स वी नीड टू यूज देम एंड यूज देम इफेक्टिवली फॉर इवन डिलीवरिंग ऑल द मैसेजेस दैट वी डू बट you know to go out and tell people that you can save money but by not buying from us now by the way we're not telling people that after this date which is 20th of september which is already now you need to only come and buy from us we're just saying that if you are in the market for tech you know just waiting a few more days can save you thousands and i think that's a message that a friend would give you and as as a business as a brand we think we are our friends with the consumers uh so that's where we are Psst. i'll just move on so uh, i'll just probably sum it up saying if you want to be connected with your users uh be transparent have purpose driven communication and of course stay honest the entire time and treat them as friends uh not as consumers also not as kings and queens uh, that over time will give you the results thank you so much Thank you so much, Anuj, and it was really a good one. And uh, the best part is that uh, COVID has, of course, affected a lot of us. But it's on you how positively you take things. It's Thank nothing you. very. I mean, it, was, it was very big thing. No, um, not a usual thing for us. Two years of lockdown, and you have discovered so many devices. Okay, ye bhi lelo, wo bhi lelo, sab lelo. Big round of applause for him, please. Did a good job, and they are doing a good job. Thank you so much. I'll call upon Mr. P. Shri Ram, Chief Product Officer, Hindu Group, to hand over the moment to him, please. And meanwhile, you can also put your hands together once more, please. Thank you so much. Thank you. Your claps will keep you warm. It's very cold here. Thank you so much. 